paysans. So a couple of weeks ago, I read a chapter out of my friend Brian's second published book. And it was a chapter he wrote about an experience he had going out and somebody gave him a piece of mushroom chocolate, which is just a little chocolate candy infused with magic mushroom. And he told about his experience. And I read the chapter. And a few commenters got upset and were concerned that I was encouraging drug use by reading that chapter out loud. And they got me thinking, does reading books encourage behaviors? Hmm. If that was true, wouldn't we have read ourselves into sanity by now? I mean, there's more self-help books than any other. Why are we still a little batshit crazy out there if there's, if books influence behavior? So whatever. So I figured today I would lighten it up and, you know, I went out and I was, ran, came across these books while I was out thrifting. So I figured that would do something sweet and innocent. So let me just mix these up and then randomly pick a book and I need glasses to see what we have here. Oh, Sleeping Beauty. A little golden book. They're so cute, the little golden books. So this it goes like this. In a faraway land long ago, King Stefan and his fair queen wished for a child. At last, a daughter was born, and they named her Aurora. Because that's all you have to do is wish for a child, and poof, bang, child. To honor the baby princess, the king held a great feast. Nobles and peasants, knights and their ladies, everyone flocked joyfully to the castle. All inclusive, everybody's invited. King Stefan welcomed his good friend King Hubert to the feast. King Hubert had brought his young son Philip with him. The kings agreed that someday Philip and Aurora would be married. I guess that's Philip hanging over the crib of the infant. Among the guests were three good fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather. Each of these magic beings wished to bless the infant with a gift. Waving her wand, Flora chanted, My gift shall be the gift of beauty. My gift, said Fauna, shall be the gift of song. See? The magic wands flying. Spreading that fairy dust all around. I think when they flew over my crib, it wasn't beauty and a song that they were flying around in that fairy dust. Merryweather's turn was next, but before she could speak, the castle doors flew open. Lightning flashed. Thunder rumbled. A tiny flame appeared and grew quickly into the form of, an evil, of the evil fairy Melissafent. Her pet black raven was perched on her shoulder. Maleficent was furious, for she hadn't been invited to the feast. Now she took revenge. Because that's what we should teach kids, is if you don't get invited to the party, seek revenge. If I took revenge on everybody who didn't invite me to a party, there'd be nobody left out there to read a book to. I too shall become, should bestow a gift on the child, she said with a sneer. The princess shall indeed grow in grace and beauty. But before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. With a cruel laugh, the evil fairy vanished. Everyone in the room was grief stricken. Okay. Evil. But Merryweather still had a gift to give, and she tried to make Maleficent's curse un undo. She said to the infant, If through this wicked witch's trick a spindle should your finger prick, not in death but just in sleep, that faithful prophecy you'll keep, and from the slumber you shall wake when true love's kiss the spell shall break. That explains everything why I'm still under the black evil crowd, cloud of bad luck. It's because I'm still waiting for the true love kiss to break the spell. <laughs> no one said it ha happens at 16. Anyway, King Stefan ordered that every spinning wheel in the land be burned. But he still feared the evil fairy's curse, so the good fairies hatched a plan. They would take Aurora to live with them deep in the woods, safe from Melissafit. The king and queen agreed. They watched the heavy hearts as the fairies hurried from the castle carrying the baby princess. Because that's what all good fairies, I mean all good parents do. They allow their babies to be carried off by three fairies out into the woods to raise. 
To guard their secret, the fairies disguised themselves as peasant women and changed Aurora's name to Briar Rose. The years passed quietly and Briar Rose grew into a beautiful young woman. At last, the princess reached her 16th birthday. Planning a surprise, the fairies sent her out to pick berries. Fauna baked a cake for her while Flora and Merryweather sewed her a new gown. In a mossy glen, Briar Rose danced and sang with her friends and bir the birds and the animals. She told them of her beautiful dream about meeting a tall, handsome stranger and falling in love. Ah, oh, I'm just like Aurora. I do that every day. I go out back, tell the squirrels in the tree about my dreams of falling in love. And they said, yeah, ha, 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 and throw acorns at me. A handsome young man came riding by. When he heard Briar Rose singing, he jumped from his horse and hid in the bushes to watch her. Then he reached out to take her hand. Briar Rose, Briar Rose was startled. I didn't mean to frighten you, the young man said. But don't you remember? We've met before. They had met once upon a dream. Briar Rose felt very happy. She and her admirer gazed into each other's eyes. The young man didn't know she was Princess Aurora. And she didn't know he was Prince Philip, to whom she had been promised in marriage many years before. Yeah, she was an infant. And what? He's in the woods, hiding in the bush, and sticks his hand out and pokes her. That's okay? Sounds a little, you know, creepy to me. He's creeping in the woods, poking her from a bush. Yeah. Yeah. Back at the cottage, the fairies gave Briar Rose her birthday surprises. Then Briar Rose told them that she had fallen in love. Oh, no, they cried. They told her the truth at last, that she was a princess betrothed to a prince. At, to a prince. Now it was time for her to return home. So poor Aurora was led away, longing for her handsome stranger. Yeah, all right. So these fairies tell you that you've been promised to a prince at birth. And you want the stranger you just met creeping in the woods. That's because she's 16. The frontal lobe's aren't developed yet. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Maleficent's raven, perched on the chimney of the cottage, had heard everything. It flew off to warn Maleficent that the princess was finally returning to her rightful home. Maleficent sped to the castle. There, using her evil powers, she lured Aurora to, the, to a high tower. In the tiny room, a spinning wheel suddenly appeared. Touch the spindle, hissed Maleficent. Touch it, I say. Clearly, the fairies didn't teach Aurora that just because someone says touch it doesn't mean you need to touch it. The three good fairies rushed to the rescue, but they were too late. Aurora had touched the sharp spindle and instantly fallen into a deep sleep. Maleficent's cruel curse had come true. With a harsh laugh, the evil fairy vanished. The good fairies wept bitterly. Poor King Stefan and the Queen, said Fauna. They'll be heartbroken when they find out, said Merryweather. They're not going to, said Flora. We'll put them all to sleep until Briar Rose awakens. So the three fairies flew back and forth, casting a dreamlike spell over everyone in the castle. Because if the bitch is going to sleep, you're all going to go to sleep. Talk about ego. I wish they would fly around my bed in the middle of the night and spread some of that fairy dust so I could sleep. Meanwhile, Melissa Fint had captured Philip and chained him deep in her dungeon. Hmm. I would too. But the good fairies had other plans for him. Using their magic, they melted the chains. They armed the prince with the shield of virtue and the sword of truth. Then they sent him racing to the castle to awaken the princess. When the evil fairy saw Philip escaping, she hurled heavy boulders at him, but the brave prince rode on. When Philip reached Aurora's castle, Maleficent caused a forest of thorns to grow up all around it. Philip hacked, through the, hacked the thorns aside with his powerful sword. Swish, swish, swish. That's quite the mighty sword. In a rage, the evil fairy soared to the top of the highest tower. When she changed into a monstrous dragon... Now shall you deal with me, O oh prince, she shrieked. Maleficent breathed huge waves of flame. Philip ducked behind his strong shield. Thunder cracked. Flames roared around him. The prince fought bravely. Guided by the good fairies, he flung his sword straight as an arrow. 
It buried itself deep into the dragon's evil heart, and the beast fell to its death. Melissifent was no more. Oh, where's Peter now? They slayed a dragon. Where's the animal rights? Philip raced to the tower where his love lay sleeping. Gently he kissed her. Aurora's eyes slowly opened. Not ev Now everyone was awake. The king and queen were overjoyed to see their daughter again, and wedding plans were soon made. The good fairies were blissful too. It had all ended just the way it should. Happily ever after. Which is a crock of shit. What is this shit? Happily ever after. First of all, now you're pimping your daughter out? And getting her married off at 16 just because he's a prince? She's 16! Oh, and you got fairies flying around with magic dust? Yeah, alright. So this is the crap we read to children. And they grow up thinking that... It's okay because the fairies are going to come spread that magic dust around and make everything that's hard okay and easy. And, you know, we could just fall asleep till everything's better again. And then a prince will come magically and kiss us in the middle of the night. And then we'll live happily ever after. No more curse. No more hard luck. Nothing bad will happen. All because the prince came and kissed us. This is a crock of shit because then we wait all life waiting for the prince who never comes. And then we're frustrated and angry and they call us bitches. When this is the shit. They told us what would happen. I will stick and finish to this book and finish reading this book. Because at least this shit is true. Magic fairies. Fairy dust. Come on. Rush.